Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week's video is going to be all about a theme that I have been seeing reoccur a lot in the lives of my friends as well as in my own personal life. So I don't know if it is seasonal depression or if there's something in the stars, but recently I have been having a lot of friends coming to me talking about how they feel lost, they feel directionless, and that they are not living the life that they want to be living. I also had my own realization recently that I am not living the life that I want to be living or creating the life that I would like to be living. I was experiencing some really deep life burnout and realized that my life wasn't as full of as much joy as I wanted it to be, which after having that realization, I decided to kind of strip my life down to the studs and to just rebuild it completely differently. I implemented six techniques or habits, whatever you want to call them, into my life and through these six habits I have been able to feel as though I am now working towards creating a life that I want to be living. If you also are ready to go after your dream life, then make sure to continue watching. The last on this list is definitely my favorite. so. Make sure to stick around till the end or even skip this video to the very end if you get bored halfway through because you won't want to miss it. I really think that that is the most important step in this process. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first and foremost on this list is going to just be something super simple, which is getting enough sleep. If you're feeling burnt out by life, it doesn't matter how strict your schedule is, how well you eat, how many times a week you go to the gym, etc, etc. It doesn't matter how many healthy habits you employ in your life. If you're feeling tired, you are going to forever and always be living on autopilot. And if you want to begin creating a life that looks different from what it has been in the past, that isn't going to be something that you can do when you're running on 50%. You're really going to need 100% energy to be able to implement some big lifestyle changes into your life. I, ever since I've been a little kid, have always been like an eight hours a night plus a nap in the middle of the day kind of girl. And that is exactly what I've been doing recently. I've been getting between eight to nine hours of sleep at night and taking a nap in the middle of the day if I can find the time. Being somebody who operates on kind of low energy, I just find it really helpful to have that little reset in the middle of the day. So if you have a job or a schedule where you can afford a midday nap, then I definitely recommend you take one. They are, in my opinion, God's gift to earth. <laughs> and number two on this list is gonna be working on your limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are the things that will drive you to work six, seven days a week out of fear that your life will fall apart if you take a day off. They're what keep you stuck in jobs that you don't love, working for a paycheck that allows you to just barely scrape by. And the worst thing about them is that they only get louder the longer you listen to them. If whenever you feel like you try and make positive change in your life, you always feel like you hit a wall, then there's a very good chance the wall that you're hitting is simply a limiting belief. And this is because limiting beliefs are essentially just beliefs about what we deserve out of life. So when you're building up your life, building up your life, and you feel like you get to a point, say your limiting belief is that you only deserve to work a job that you don't really like to make enough money to get by, then once you hit that threshold of making enough money to get by, working a job that you don't really like, then it's going to be really difficult for you to get past that because your limiting beliefs will literally subconsciously be sabotaging any progress, any further progress that you could be making. This kind of sabotage could look like not applying for a job that you really want because you feel like you don't deserve it, you feel like there are other people out there that are more qualified. It could look like not signing onto a dating app because you feel like you need to lose five or 10 pounds before you're gonna be good enough to be chosen in a relationship. Limiting beliefs are essentially a protective mechanism that we use to prevent us from failing, but unfortunately they also prevent us from going after the life that we really want to be living. A great place to start if you want to start changing your life is to begin by identifying your limiting beliefs. A good way to do this is to maybe look at the beliefs that your parents have surrounding money, surrounding love, and surrounding life in general. If your parents always worked really hard at jobs that they didn't love to have just enough money to get by, or always told you that work is just something that you have to do, not something that you can love, then chances are that those beliefs are going to be very deeply ingrained in you as well. 
Once you're able to identify your limiting beliefs, then there are so many good resources online. One book that I really love is called The Mountain Is You, and that's all about overcoming self-sabotage and overcoming limiting beliefs. Tony Robbins also has a lot of free resources on his website, so I recommend checking those out. And number three on this list is going to be meditation. If you're one of those people that thinks that their mind is too busy to meditate and, oh, I can't meditate because when I sit down to meditate, all I can do is think, then you are somebody that really needs meditation. I think that people have this idea that the only people that meditate are these like super zen yogis that all they have to do is just sit down and close their eyes and then their mind is free of thoughts, but that is just so not the reality. If you're not used to meditating, then there's a good chance that you have a bit of a monkey brain going on and that you're not gonna be able to stop your thoughts or calm your thoughts very easily. If this sounds like you, then you are one of those people that could really benefit from meditating. One of the ways that meditation works is that it changes the normal path that your thoughts take. So much like a water will take the path of least resistance down a river, your thoughts do the same thing in your brain. So you will have very worn neural pathways in your brain that your thoughts are used to taking. This is why you spend a lot of time every day thinking the same thoughts. And if you spent days, months, or years thinking the same things, then chances are you're gonna have neural pathways that are very, very worn for having these same thinking patterns. The practice of meditation is really great because it actually allows you to stop your thoughts in their track. So instead of them always going the same way, you have the opportunity to stop them and then to guide them into a different direction. It's actually clinically proven that meditation can alter the neuroplasticity of your brain, meaning that it can wire your brain to function differently than it has in the past. The emotion gratitude has also been shown to have the same effects on the neuroplasticity of the brain. So if you're not really feeling like doing meditation, you could try doing a gratitude list every morning instead. But if you do decide to meditate, then I will tell you right now, don't expect the first couple weeks or even couple months of meditation to be comfortable. Chances are you're gonna spend the 10 minutes that you're trying to meditate just sitting there, meditating for five or 10 seconds, getting distracted by a thought, one, two, three, four, five minutes later being like, oh shit, I'm supposed to be meditating right now, coming back, trying not to think, and just repeating that process over and over. But slowly but surely, you're gonna start to notice the space in between your thoughts get longer and longer and longer. And by doing this practice, you're gonna be able to train your brain and actually take space from your usual thinking patterns, which when you have a good handle on it, feels so good. Meditation is actually really addictive when you learn how to do it properly. Moving on to number four on this list, which is ask for help. If you're anything like me, then you would literally rather light yourself on fire than ask anybody else for a hand. I don't know if it's because I feel like I need to prove to myself that I can do hard things on my own or if it's because I don't want to be a burden to other people, but I just find it so hard to ask other people for help. I would rather just suffer and just do a bad job and do it on my own than feel as though I needed to ask anybody to help me to do it. But an inability to ask anybody else for help is actually a trauma response that is born from feeling as though you're constantly let down from other people. It is, although independence is a good trait, not being able to ask for help or support when you need it has a lot of really negative repercussions. Whether it's asking a loved one for some financial help so that you can take some time off work or just actually talking to your friends and family about your problems, opening up and asking for support when you need it is really essential in overcoming the obstacles that you're experiencing in your life so that you can begin moving forward, building a life that feels really good for you. Now, moving on to the importance of being playful. There's no denying that accomplishing really difficult things in your life or checking boxes off your to-do list feels really good, but it's important to remember that work isn't the only important thing in life and it is scientifically proven that play is a very important part of human development and an important part of just feeling alive and overall enjoying life. If you feel like you've been overworking and just grinding every day, checking the box off the to-do list, just getting things done, that it's important that you pencil in some time for play. Time when you have nothing to do other than just be free, be in the moment and just enjoy yourself. Because I think that part of this human experience is about 
so much more than just accomplishing goals. Like we weren't put on this planet to just work every single day. I don't think that that's why we're alive. So for me, I've just been really intentional about scheduling two or three days a week where I just really have nothing to do, where I can just wake up and decide whatever I wanna do that day. Maybe it's go and play pool, maybe it's go out dancing with my friends, maybe it's spending the whole day in bed just watching Netflix and being on my phone. Whatever it is, it just feels so good to wake up and just actually decide what you wanna do with your day instead of having other people or other events or responsibilities decide for you. I think that it's really hard to be excited about your day and it's really easy for life to feel monotonous when every single day you just wake up and have to do the exact same thing that you did the day before. And of course, if that's what you're doing all the time and you don't feel like you're moving forward, then it's going to be really difficult to have energy to go after the things that you want to do. So don't be afraid to pencil in some play. Don't feel like you're wasting your time if all you do one day is just go out, hang out with your friends, have coffee, go for a drink, whatever. Like. You deserve to also have fun. And last thing on this list is going to be doing the hard things. So if you're anything like me, you don't really like doing the hard things. Personally, I'm very good at finding excuses for not doing the things that I wanna be doing. My standards for myself are really high and often I feel as though if I can't do something perfectly then I'm just not gonna do it at all. But being unable to do things perfectly is always like, it's the perfect excuse because you can always come up with an excuse for why you can't do something. Oh, I'm a little bit too tired. I have other work I could be doing. Oh, I'm having a bad hair day, so I don't want to film, whatever it is. If you're expecting yourself to be perfect, then you will always have an excuse why you can't do something perfectly and you're just never going to do it. But I swear there's no worse feeling than being like, oh, I have this thing that I really want to do and that I feel really passionate about and then just never actually doing it and just fill my day with doing shit for other people instead, you know? Like writing content to help somebody else's business thrive instead of doing my own. Knowing that I'm doing that day in, day out, week in, week out actually starts to wear on my soul after a while. I'm also somebody that lived a lot of their life on easy mode and I feel like I was always looking for the easiest way out of things. But I feel like after a few years of doing that, I've realized that Easy mode isn't necessarily doing the easiest thing and it actually doesn't make you feel very good. So a big challenge for myself recently has been doing the things that I wanna do even if I end up doing them imperfectly. So I wanna end this video by asking you what are some of the things that you wanna do but you're not doing them because they're too hard or you're afraid you're gonna fail. Maybe you wanna be a YouTuber, maybe you wanna create an online income, maybe you wanna be an artist, maybe you wanna do photography. Whatever it is, I challenge you to start doing those things, even if you do them imperfectly in the beginning. Decide on whatever it is that you want to do and then find little ways to infuse your day with it every single day. Whether that's taking one photo, writing a hundred words in a book or a blog post, whatever it is, start to infuse your day with those little things and I guarantee that that's going to make you feel so good because finally you're going to be moving towards your dream life. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight. I feel like if you're trying to accomplish something big and make really radical change in your life, you have to be prepared to give yourself one to three years to actually make it happen. I think that a big reason why people don't wanna go after the hard things in life is because they're so used to seeing like TikTokers or Instagrammers or whoever it is that like blows up overnight and makes a bunch of money and it's really easy for them. But the reality is that that's not the reality. So whatever it is that you want to do, just trust that you deserve it. Get rid of those limiting beliefs, get lots of sleep, have some fun, and just every single day do what you can to help you work towards your goals. So this is it for today's video. I hope that you guys found this so helpful. I have personally been implementing all of these steps, techniques, habits, whatever you want to call them into my life recently. and. It's been challenging and it's still been an up and down roller coaster. Like, I'm not going to say that I went from feeling super burnt out and realizing that I wasn't loving my life to overnight being like, oh, I got nine hours of sleep last night. I feel great. But I think the important thing here is not waking up tomorrow and all of a sudden being living your dream life, 
but it's just when you're working that nine to five that you don't love or doing something that doesn't set your soul on fire in the back of your mind being like, yeah, maybe I'm not living my dream life today and maybe it's not gonna be tomorrow, but eventually I know that I am putting in the work to create something that's really fucking dope. And that's all that matters. Thank you all so much for joining me for this video today. If you haven't already, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I love hearing from you guys and let me know in the comments below which of these steps you feel the most ready to implement in your life.